Okay, now, we have broke down five of the tribes, and we made a statement that um, the Negro tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, ran into Africa in 70 AD, running from Roman persecution. So we're going to get, get the scriptural proof of that, how Israel or Judah actually ran into Africa. And then we're going to go back to Genesis and break down the rest of the tribes. Let's go to Luke 21 and 20. Read that. And when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. So Christ said, when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. So that was a high occupation of Roman centurions within the land of Israel. Read. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's the desolation spoken of in Daniel. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee into the mountains. So you want to know how Israel or the lost sheep got into Africa? They ran into Africa running from Roman persecution in 70 AD. What mountains is this explaining? The mountains between Africa and Europe, which is the Atlas Mountains, went over into Morocco and migrated into the Ivory Coast, like Liberia, uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, uh, Nigeria, all those, all those Timbuktu, all those different areas uh, from the western Ivory Coast were given to Israel, or the seed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, until the Lord uh, allowed the Europeans to take them into their new lands. Now you have the Hamitic people, which are natural Africans, and the Arabs, the seed of Ishmael, along with Esau. They, con they conspired together to sell God's people into the lands they are in today, that they reside in today in captivity, <clears throat> until the Lord will, sa will save them. So, they ran into Africa. They wasn't born in Africa. They, wouldn't, they, they was not supposed to stay in Africa. They were there for a period of time. Now, go to Revelations 12 and 12. Africa is not the motherland. That's another false teaching, okay? All life came off of the boat. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, okay? And all the life came off the boat. The boat settled in Mount Ararat, Turkey. Ham migrated into his land, which is Africa today. Shem went into his land, okay? And Japheth went into their lands, which is uh, the European areas. And it was pushed back further east into Asia. Read Revelations 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. The Lord says woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Read. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So when Christ was crucified the, the, the clock started ticking on how long Satan would have to reign in this earth. So, through that short time, he started persecuting Christ's people, starting in 70 A.D. Read. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Who was the woman that brought forth Christ? Israel. That's the woman. Read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. She flew, she flew into the wilderness. That was Israel running into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution. Go ahead. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half of time. And that time, time and a half of times is a dispensation of time between the time Israel would fall until Christ would come back and save Israel. That's the dispensation. Now, let's go back into identifying the lost tribes of Israel. We've identified Reuben, which is uh, the Seminole Indians and the Aborigines of Australia. We've identified Simeon, which are the, the Dominicans, Levi, which are the Haitians. We've identified Judah, which is the so-called Negroes here. We've identified Benjamin, which is the so-called Jamaicans, West Indian, and the people in Trinidad. Now we're going into Zebulon. The father Jacob, Israel, 
letting his children know what will befall them in the last days. Uh, let's go to Genesis 49 and 13. Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships. He shall be for an haven of ships. Who's that? Panama and Guatemala. Panama, Panam the Panama Canal, which is a haven of ships. So the Lord told uh, Zebulun, in the last days, your, your habitation will be a haven for ships. That one land of Panama connects both oceans. It communicates, with, it, it communicates and actually uh, trade on both sides of the world. That's the haven of ships. Panama. So if you were from if you're a Panamanian and Guatemalan, you are from the tribe of Zebulon because ships will be haven on your land in the latter days. Now, let's get the next one, Genesis 49 and 14. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Strong ass couching down between two burdens. When you see that uh, those uh, those bumper stickers south of the border, you see the two the two donkeys and the man couching down with a big hat on that lets you know that their burdens would be the fact that they work they work hard they're known for working they, and, and that work is the burden that the Lord put on them read and he saw that and he saw that rest was good that rest is the fiesta that the Mexicans have every noon which is called rest go ahead and the land that it was pleasant. And the land that it was pleasant, a very fertile land the Mexicans hold today. And all the other all the other people in the earth, the heathens, use that land for their own gain. There's no way Mexicans should have to cross the border to feed their family with how rich and fertile their land is. The other nations have taken advantage of Issachar and made them poor. Fulfilling this prophecy to let you know that they'll be like an ass couched between two two asses or burdens or donkeys. They'll, they'll have to work with the sweat of their brow to make anything, even though they have a fruitful land. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 18 and 19. So who is Issachar the Mexicans today? Read that. And of Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. In thy tents. That's how they used to travel. In tents. All the Indian tribes over here used to travel in teepees or tents. Or what the scriptures call in the Old Testament, booths. Booth, traveling in tents. Another defined prophecy to show you who the children of Israel are here today. Now let's go to Genesis 49 and 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Now we know that Dan was the smallest of all the tribes of Israel. Dan was small. They had a little place next to Mount Seir. We found out through research, and we're going to make a whole tape on this to prove what we're showing here, that Dan ended up becoming the Herods and set up a Sanhedrin to judge God's people. So Dan made an agreement with Esau and Satan for the priesthood, and they became the Herods, and that's why they're not named in Revelation the 12th chapter. Dan started dealing with evil, witchcraft. And they link their seed with Esau. Get Judges 18 and 1. More proof on Dan. It says, Dan so judge is one of the tribes of Israel. And we know Dan was not given.